very few game reserves have full-time active security personnel, anti-poaching unit personnel employed. There's a plethora of reasons for that. Initially is the cost. I mean, having active anti-poaching units um, patrolling your, your game reserve, looking after your wildlife is expensive. They require you know, good training, good equipment, good vehicles, um, accommodation, um, uh, and it, it's an expensive uh, undertaking to, to have that running um, continuously on, on a game reserve. So it's a, it's a, I think a, an important um, point in, uh, in Ongava's history was the establishment of that anti-poaching unit in the very beginning because it, it set the tone for what we were trying to do here. That, that, um, that program and that unit has had to develop over the last 20, 25 years as, on, as Ongava and as conservation and as uh, poaching has developed um, and the threats have changed. So initially it was quite a, quite a focused unit on, on one, one particular avenue. It, it was boots on the ground and, and rhino monitoring. That program has now developed into a multifaceted uh, program and unit um, which employs aircraft technology, boots on the ground, night vision equipment. Um, so it really has had to develop over the last 25 years. And that's been in response to um, how Ongava has developed as a, as a game reserve, but also um, the threats that we have faced um, and how they have grown. The last, the last sort of 15 years have seen a, a, a massive increase in in trade in, in illegal wildlife products um, and we, we talk about rhino a lot but I mean it's not just rhino it's elephant lions I mean the, the illegal wildlife trade in lion bones is is significant lion populations are are crashing all around Africa we improve develop continually change what we're doing um, and, and make the teams more active more progressive and how they deal with this this threat when we talk about anti-poaching it um, it sounds like quite an exciting job and there are significant parts of it that are exciting but it it is and does require a great deal of commitment um, and and hard work and, and passion because it's a job that is not um, in the limelight it's not out there for everybody to see it's normally a, a group of people um, who are behind the scenes and who are working incredibly hard Monday to Sunday 24 hours a day 365 days a year so the qualities that are required to become an APU member, you have to be committed, you have to have a passion and, and love for wildlife, but there's a lot of, you know, of mundane hard work that goes into making sure that um, these animals are protected. So you have to be committed uh, to this sort of program and this sort of lifestyle. There are also a, a bunch of different, tra different training areas that you have to be able to complete successfully. So for starters, you need to understand uh, technology, and a monitoring program, so that requires operation of, of cameras, night vision equipment, uh, technology um, in terms of tablets and cell phones, um, recording of information correctly, you know, that uh, I think people take that for granted, but actually writing stuff down and um, entering stuff or information into a digital format, it, you have to concentrate and do it properly, otherwise the data that you're collecting is uh, it, it, it's of no use and no consequence. So there's a lot of sort of monitoring training that has to take place before you can become a successful anti-poaching unit member. You also obviously have to understand and become proficient with the use of firearms. So all of our anti-poaching unit members are armed. They are put through significant um, amounts of training for that and regular training on a um, weekly and monthly basis to make sure that they are proficient and that they can use these weapons to protect the wildlife that we have. So there's a a great deal of emphasis placed on, on, on security and training for security. Another area that you need to um, successfully complete is first aid training. So I think it's important to understand that conservation has developed from being monitoring and conservationists to a much more armed conservationist role than previously. Um, so what we are is a deterrent and a significant deterrent to poachers who would come into Ongava and try and poach our wildlife. And part of that training is obviously first, first aid training, advanced first aid training, um, trauma training. So in a tactical environment so that you are prepared to deal with things like gunshot wounds and traumatic experiences. So it takes a lot to become an APU. The development of people in our APU team is incredibly important to us. I, I think it's unique, or at least to Ongava, 
is the drive to make a career out of, of being an APU member. So, you know, historically, if you were a tracker um, and you were good at it, you would do it for years and years and years, and there would be sort of no career progression. So we've changed that as they move through different roles and different functions within our teams, so they develop. And it's, it, there are a number of different career paths they can choose. I mean, it, it could end up in management, special operators with specific skills, such as the APUs who fly or fly with me, or, um, you know, if, they, if they've got administrative skills and management skills, then they could potentially develop into future team leaders and APU uh, managers. So there's a, a, a drive to make sure that people are committed and feel that they have a career um, uh, in Ongava as an APU. I'd just like to reiterate the importance of the anti-poaching unit on Ongava for the security of the wildlife here. Um, and just to expand a little bit as to what it is to be an anti-poaching unit member on what their functions are and how important that is for Ongava in the short-term future and the long-term future. I think it's become pretty clear in the last two months with the corona pandemic that is um, affecting the globe. Um, in, in, in just about every country in the world is affected negatively in, in many different ways. And what's come about is that the, the anti-poaching unit has had to remain on Ongava where all of our other hospitality departments have, have, have been forced to shut down. Now the APU have stayed to look after and and protect the wildlife that is still still here. So without these guys um, who are standing next to me and others in our team protecting the wildlife, securing um, the environment in which this wildlife uh, roams free, uh, none of this would be available for us um, to come and view again or, or see in a couple of months from now. It would deteriorate quite rapidly. And I think that's another important point is that if we were to take anti-poaching out of conservation in, in Namibia, in the present climate of, of rhino poaching and illegal wildlife trade, wildlife areas in Namibia would, would, would be, be decimated. Um, we only have to look around us at other game reserves who, who do not have active anti-poaching units or haven't had active anti-poaching units in the past and have really had to ramp things up in the last sort of couple of years because they've faced um, in incredible levels of, of poaching of, of animals like rhino um, to really understand the importance of this team and the impact they've had in protecting this environment that is Ungava. So the guys do a fundamental job and it's really important that they stay um, and continue their jobs even through this pandemic um, to make sure that all the wildlife on Ungava in this part of Namibia is still here when the pandemic passes and people can once again travel and come back and view our wonderful environment.